Welcome to the Airlift Workshop, where you get expertise from the air suspension specialists, keeping you on the road and in top condition. Today, we're installing a Load Lifter 7500 XL kit on a 2018 Ram 2500. Remember, this overview doesn't replace your installation guide. Grab yours out of the box and let's get started. We'll start by assembling the air springs. Place a roll plate on top of each air spring. Next, insert carriage bolts into the back square holes of the upper bracket. Then, secure the bracket to the top of the air springs with button head screws. The upper air spring brackets will mirror each other, creating a left and right hand assembly. Then, attach a swivel elbow fitting to the top of the air springs and tighten with your finger. Then tighten with a wrench one and a half turns. Install the thick flat washer onto the lower bracket with a hex bolt, flat washer, and nylon lock nut. Insert the long carriage bolts into the square holes in the lower bracket. Flip the air spring assemblies over and set a roll plate on the bottom of the air spring. Install the lower bracket onto the air spring assembly so that the large washer will be forward of the axle once installed. Attach using button head screws. Now it's time to install the finished assemblies. Raise the truck with a floor jack and support the frame with jack stands, making room for the air spring assembly and remove the wheels. For filming purposes, we're using a drive-on vehicle hoist. On some models, there's a small vent tube on the left side axle that needs to be tied on an angle with a zip tie. Use the small hole next to the coil spring seat to angle the tube out of the way. Remove the jounce bumpers from both sides. Attach the upper frame bracket to the frame. Make sure the large hole is on the outside of the frame. Set the air spring assemblies into position between the axle and the frame. Make sure when installing on the left side, the long carriage bolt goes in between the brake line and the axle. Carefully align the upper air spring brackets, making sure the carriage bolt and fitting line up. Raise the axle or lower the frame so that the top brackets come together. Insert a carriage bolt through the open front holes from the bottom up and cap with a serrated flange lock nut. Position the lower bracket over the lower jounce bumper strike plate. The large washer on the bottom should be positioned forward of the jounce bumper strike plate. Set the clamp bar over the hanging carriage bolts, cap with serrated flange lock nuts, and torque evenly. Make sure you have proper clearance between the air spring assemblies and the tires once installed. There must be more than half an inch of clearance between the upper roll plate and the edge of the tire. Next, you'll need to run the air lines. Before routing air lines to the air springs, note the available length and pick a convenient inflation valve drilling location. We'll use the bumper as our location as we found an existing hole for securing the inflation valve. You could also use the license plate recess, wheel well flanges, or under the gas cap access door. You may need to drill a hole. Place a nut and star washer on the inflation valve and push it through the inflation valve hole. Use a rubber washer, flat washer, and nut to secure it in place. Then twist on the valve cap when cutting air lines, never cut from the side or with wire cutters. You'll leave a jagged edge and ruin the hose. Instead, use a sharp razor blade to get a square, clean cut. A hose cutter will also do the trick. Route the longest air line path first. Secure it along the frame using the provided zip ties. Once routed, measure an extra 12 inches, then cut the air line. Following the same guidelines, route, secure, and cut the second air line. Now insert both lines into the push to connect fittings. To make sure your airlift kit is airtight, inflate the system to 30 PSI and spray a soapy solution on all connections and valves while checking for exiting air bubbles. 